All right, so you want to make your own soundboard app because um, they're fun and easy to make and you can make them for Android devices using um, the inbuilt Air for Android uh, option right here. Uh, or you could make ActionScript 3 version, which would just run on a desktop computer. Um, but I mean, soundboards are always a bit of fun. You can, um, you know, pick your weapon and blast away. Uh, or you might, you know, play music. Anakin has turned. Or random quotes or whatever. Who knows? Um, there it was. Yeah, that's always annoying. Should have probably disabled that. Um, soundboards are fun. So how do we build one? Um, let's get into it. So I've chosen Air for Android. Um, however, ActionScript 3 will work and Air for Desktop and even Air for iOS. All this stuff will work for any of these things, but I'm going to work with Air for Android for this shoot. Um, obviously, I've got two sounds here and I've put them into my library here. I've got the Wilhelm Scream and I've got a Whoosh sound effect. Both are royalty free. You can find them online. Um, just use any sound. Um, and I've made these two buttons uh, just previously to save a bit of time. So like I was saying, two ways to play sounds. The first way is the easy way. The second way takes a little bit more effort, has to use action scripts, um, but allows you to have more control over your sounds. So we'll start with the easy way first. So um, the easy way works well for sound that can spam over the top of each other. So if you don't care that sounds will play over the top of each other, go the easy way every time because it's easy. So with the whoosh one here, we're just gonna double click on it. Um, and we're gonna press F6 a few times here. Um, and that'll just fill in these for us. And on the over, we're just gonna change this color um, so that we can tell that we're actually pressing it. Um, and we're just gonna change it to blue, whatever. Um, and on down as well, we'll change that to blue too. Why not? Uh, cool. Um, now, the way it works is all you gotta do is click on the solid shape that you can see here. So on over and down, um, hit on down, which is what happens when you actually press. Um, and you'll notice here under sound, you can choose a sound to play when down is happening. So when you've clicked down on your mouse. So I'm gonna go with the whoosh effect. Um, and if we get back out of our scene, press control enter. And wow, that was easy. Um, so if you're happy to make an application that just plays sounds that spam over the top of each other, um, then this will work for you. But if you want it so that when you press it and press another one, um, the original sound will stop, uh, keep watching. Um, so the second way to make sound um, is to do it with action script. So first we need to go to our library um, and what we need to do is double click on our sound. So we're gonna go to the Wilhelm scream, right click, go to properties um, and then click on the action script tab. Um, and we need to click export for action script. Um, and this is the name that will be referenced by our code later and it's pretty long. And generally speaking, you wanna make that smaller so less chance of a typo. So I'm just gonna call it screen. Um, then you press okay. It'll pop up with this thing. Um, usually you just say don't show again and press okay. Um, and you can tell it's worked because under here, under linkage, you can see it's been called screen. Um, and it even tells you how many times you use it later on. Um, so for all intents and purposes, when we use ActionScript, Scream is its reference. So now what we're gonna do is click on frame number one here, press F9. All right, so what we need to do is create a variable which will like save this sound um, and then allow us to play it later on. So we're gonna write VAR for variable and then the name of the sound. So we're gonna call it Scream um, and we'll call it Scream 1 uh, because we don't wanna make it the same as the actual ActionScript name which you can see here. So we're gonna call it screen one, and then we're gonna write full colon, and then we're gonna write scream, uh, because that's the name of it in the action script here. Um, and then we're gonna write equals new screen. And then open close bracket semicolon. Um, so pretty much we've stored it as screen one, um, and it is a new instance of scream, and I've spelled it wrong, scream, there we go, cool. So there's our variable created. Um, and now what we need to do is create a event listener um, for each of these buttons, for actually just for the screen button um, that will play the sound and stop any background sounds at the same time. So what we're gonna do is um, give our screen button a name. So if we click back here, go to properties, we're gonna call it Scream BTN. And we're gonna copy that. And we're gonna go back to our code 
um, on frame number one, that is, up here on the actions layer. And we're going to write scream btn dot add event listener, open bracket, mouse event dot click. And this works for touch as well, so no stress there. And we're going to call it sound play. Um, and we'll close that. And now we need to make the function. So function sound play, which is the same as this here. Um, open bracket, and we're just going to write E instead of event. Um, and it's going to be on the mouse event. Once again, still works for touch, so don't worry. And full colon and the word void. Press enter. Open your parentheses. Press enter again to close the parentheses. Um, and this is where we'll put our commands. So uh, what we want to do in here is um, to start with, we'll just have our sound. So it's called scream one. And we're going to write dot play, open, close bracket, semicolon. Um, and so this will make this sound play. So we'll press on the X here and control enter to test it out. <coughs> and obviously our wish still works as well. Um, but you can spam it and um, sometimes that's not what you want. So what we're going to do is add a little bit more code um, to stop that spamming from happening. So what we're going to do is press enter once um, so that it gets read um, top down because it kind of reads in a stack and we're going to write sound mixer. I got to get rid of that capital O. Sound and that capital I, good on me. Sound mixer dot stop all open close semicolon um, and you'll notice it's imported the i oh know it hasn't yet now uh, we'll probably have to import the sound mixture as well so um, if it doesn't do that automatically you just write import um, flash dot media dot sound mixer and i keep doing that capital o semicolon um, and that will allow for the sound mixer controls to work. So if we press on the X now um, and press control enter to test this out. <coughs> when we re-click the button, it stops the previous sounds from playing um, and allows us to have a little bit more control over that. So there you go. There's two ways you can play sounds. Obviously this way is significantly easier than uh, this way. Um, but you know, this way has a little bit more control. Uh, if you want to create your own custom sounds instead of downloading um, royalty-free ones, um, open up Adobe Audition um, and it usually prompts you with this. Um, this is the hardware preference. Make sure you've picked the microphone that you're using. I'm using this um, USB input microphone. Um, make sure you're using um, the correct output as well for your headphones and then press OK. Um, and depending on what kind of microphone you have will depend on um, if it records in 4400 or in uh, you know, 48. Uh, but we're gonna go with 44100 and mine is a mono. Um, pretty much you're just gonna make sure these settings match up with the microphone that you use. So you press okay. Um, and now you can start recording and you can see it capturing my voice there. Um, and that's pretty much that. Um, if you stop, you can then edit this out. So maybe you wanna get rid of some of it um, for example, if you don't like this big space here, you can see with the wavelengths. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now you can start recording and you can see it capturing my voice there. So maybe I want to get rid of this space. You just highlight it like this. You press delete on your keyboard. It deletes it. You might want to undo that. So you press control Z. Um, it's a really simple program to use in terms of editing and all that. Um, what you do need to do though, um, and this is pretty important for animate and flash is file save as. Um, and when you save it, particularly if you're saving it as a compressed format like uh, MP3, um, you probably want to change that to stereo uh, because you don't want it just coming through one ear. So I'm going to hit stereo, press OK. Um, and then when you're changing the format here, make sure it's a constant bitrate. If you choose a variable bitrate, it will not work in flash. It, the sound won't be recognized properly. So make sure it's constant, press OK. I've just got a high quality one there. Um, and then you just save it to um, wherever it is you want to save it with a a good file name and that'll save it as an mp3 and then you can use that in your soundboard apps.